Oh, good morning, guys. I'm at my brand new stinking job. As you guys know, YouTube's been tough these days. I made a video about how I quit YouTube not too long ago. The revenue from AdSense has not been good. The views I've been struggling with too because I need to get a new adventure going. This company here, it's a gravel company. Well, it's a paving company. They've got all kinds of material stored here, all kinds of piles, different grades of stone and rock and rubble. And this is what they use basically to pave all of the highways. And they reached out to me and they said, listen, I have a job for you. And they have some really interesting perks to work for, with. And I am going to get the full advantage of everything. So this, guys, is my new job. And I'm going to take you guys on a pretty slick adventure. We got some big dogs here. We got uh, Scott. He's going to come into play later on in the video. You guys remember subscriber Scott. He's got his own channel. You can check him out. What's it called? The Canadian Outdoors Men. The Canadian Outdoors Men. I'll link that down in the description, but you can go check him out. We got the canoe here. I've got some trap gear here and I've got all the fishing. So we should be on in for a pretty good ride. If we can fight the sun today, we might be able to get something done. Yeah, it's gonna be a hot one today for sure. I got my buffs to protect my face and my neck, so. I put sunscreen on my neck only. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. I probably should have smathered it all over the place because it's gonna be a scorcher. But uh, let's get to it. If we don't get going, we're not gonna get the job done and I'm not gonna get paid. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. I appreciate having you guys along. If you guys can watch the video all the way through, that really does help. But I do want to thank my sponsor for today, Raid Shadow Legends, bringing you a true console level experience right to your phone. With Raid, there's always something new. This time, there's a new addition, legendary champion from High Elves faction, Deliana. Deliana is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game. She possesses some great skill sets and abilities which can be helpful for all players no matter at what stage of the game you are in. Raid's currently running a special Deliana Chase event. You're gonna get your hands on Deliana just by logging in on seven different times up until July 28th. For all new players, simply enter My Deliana and you're gonna get a whole bunch of new goodies. By entering the code, you're gonna get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero Deliana to max level 50. You're also gonna get a ton of silver. Promo code is available only to new players. Tons of new stuff happening in Raid. There's five new badass champions to help you guys advance in the game. On top of that, Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the entire month. You're gonna get your hands on some incredible skins from everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. This is the best time to get started Raid. Use my QR code up here or over here, as well as the link down below, and that's gonna get $30 for unique bonuses. We're talking your free Epic Champion Tyrell, 200k silver, one energy refill, and one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All of those special features will be waiting for you right here. Simply click and they're yours. Thanks to Ray for sponsoring this video. Let's jump back into today's adventure. So I was just here with the uh, manager of the property and uh, they showed me around a little bit. So we're gonna go over to uh, just a little baby beaver dam and we're gonna have a peek around to see if we can uh, figure out what's, what these beavers are up to or if there's actually even a beaver here. We can do that with trail recon. Trail cameras always tell us exactly what's happening. So first thing we notice here is that there, well, there's a, there's a dam over here but over on this side here, it actually, the water levels have improved a lot. In the beaver world, water level improvements are the thing. They are what they need. So as you can see, uh, there's no beaver lodge or anything like that. There might be one up a little bit further. Um, we will go check up there and inspect to see what's going on. But the main thing I'm looking for, oh, a trout just jumped right there. There's an opportunity. I thought there might be some trout here because it's deep enough. The rest of this river is actually pretty shallow. But uh, we might have to cast in there. There's a little bit of a dam here, but there's something curious that I'm noticing. Well, you see a cut cutting there. That's a beaver cutting. There's a beaver cutting here, and there's uh, branches in here that are beaver cuttings. It is leaking. The, the dam is leaking here, and the dam is not very high. And it also doesn't look like there's a lot of fresh stuff on the beaver dam. So there's only really one way that I know, aside from setting a trap here right now, is to actually put up a trail camera and do some recon 
recon. This will be a good tree here. We can overlook any activity going on over here. See, there's another beaver cutting right there, but it's really old. We'll break the dam a little bit. Let a little bit more water trickle through because there's still some water trickling through right now. We'll let a little bit more and that should agitate the beaver enough to come in here and have a peek and inspect this or fix it. So just playing around here a little bit, I noticed there's some green leaves in this dam, which is actually a good sign that there could be, there could actually be a beaver here. I didn't notice that before, but any of, oh, there's a big snapping turtle over there. Ah, oh, that turtle took off into the fast water. I don't know if I told you guys before, but uh, they changed the rules around snappers. You can't eat them anymore. I don't know why, there's lots of them around, but man, this beaver is not doing a really good job on this dam. I've hardly agitated things here, and there's a lot of water being let off already. There's a program here, and what they do is they clear out a lot of the material so that the trout can survive in here. There's a, a naturalized uh, br brown trout population in this river system, but it's very shallow and the water doesn't move very well. This is one of my favorite trap tools, the axe. We don't much need it today, but uh, we'll make use of it. It'll make light work of breaking up the dam here. I need some new rubber boots. My rubber boots are just for show. That doesn't even block any of the water from coming in. I might as well just go in with my running shoes at this point. We want the beaver to come fix this dam because that's the only way we're really gonna be able to catch it. And so make this spot here. See the rocks they, the beaver actually will move rocks. <laughs> to dam the river up. We don't want to let all the water out of this area either. And then we want it in a deep enough spot here that the uh, we can still put a trap in here and catch something. Ew! Ew! Well, <laughs> I think we found what that turtle was munching on. Poor guy, he's not even dead. Well, let's put this guy out of his misery. Where's that turtle gone? Well, there you go turtle. <laughs> it's gonna, just gonna wash back here anyway. That turtle caught himself a, looks like a bull nose sucker. The turtle kind of buggered off over there. So I imagine that turtle will be coming back to have a feast on that. Okay, well that looks like a good clean break there. And then when we want to set it, set our trap, we can set the trap out here. And that beaver, we can block it off and it'll have to come swim in here to check it. Two inches of water. And uh, we don't want to let it all out at the same time, right? Because then we're going to have flooding issues down below. We don't need a trail camera here. Uh, because obviously, if the beaver fixes it, we'll know too. And no beaver that's good for anything is going to uh, leave a break in the dam like that. You can see it's a pretty obvious break in the water level. Is already starting to come down. A dam beaver set something I've never done before, so give that a try. I've only fished in this creek once before, but you can see how shallow and clear it is. It's good habitat for trout, but I think they have a hard time finding like flowing water or deep water because it's all pretty flat stuff and amazingly cold actually too, so it's like the perfect habitat for trout. I got my Browning camera, extremely reliable and they take great video footage too, which is paramount when we're scouting for animals, it's a little too high still. So what I'm gonna do is either I can move the camera down to get it more in the beaver, the beaver wheelhouse, let's say, or what we can do here is, uh, that doesn't look all that bad. So you can see actually above here is a lot deeper water. It's not a lot deeper, but it's, well, it's probably two or three times as deep as it is down there. The water's starting to slow a little bit because I've let uh, it's been a few minutes since I got the trail camera set up. You can see it's, uh, it's actually better habitat for the trout, but the problem is, is it silts up, right? So you have a kind of a problem for the trout. It's a solution, but it's also a problem. The, uh, the restoration project that comes through here every year will actually uh, set up habitat for trout. They'll set up deeper waters. Like I said, it's private property. So <laughs> it's for sure this is gonna be some good holdover trout that haven't been fished in a long time. I might be able to spot some trout in there. This is my secret weapon this year for trout fishing for sure. Is to go totally 
to the polarized glasses. A company called Grizzly Fishing sent me these to try out and I've really been impressed by them. They worked really well for um, bow fishing especially because you definitely need to be able to see down to the bottom when you're bow fishing. I'll see how much this helps if I can get a bead on some decent sized trout in here. Fish just jumped over there, under the bank. It's hard to see with the sun the way it is right now. Oh, there was a big trout just went. Did you see the uh, cloud of mud that went? That was probably a good eight inches. Oh, there's a bunch down there. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Oh yeah, you guys see that? Oh man. I hope those aren't suckers. They might be suckers. So I was told on this creek that you really got to approach with caution. That is the trick. Oh, <laughs> I just spooked fish again. Yeah, it's loaded with trout in here. That's a trout. For sure that's a trout. Well, we might have found the honey hole straight off the hop. That's pretty sweet. I go slow. I just pushed a whole bunch of trout out again. I don't think those are suckers, but they could be suckers too. Well, I feel like I'm getting a little bit sidetracked on the fish adventure, but that's okay. I am also coming up the bank here to see if I can find some uh, beaver activity. And it looks like I might have found something. Look at that. It's a fresh, fresh poplar. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at over there. There's, there seems to be a little bit of activity and there could be a beaver up there in the bank. Uh, we can inspect this probably from the other side. Uh, if we cross over on the dam, we can go have a peek on the other side. If we know where the dam is, Bank den, it's probably a bank den. And we can have a, maybe a second alternate spot to set some traps at. So I got a first solid indication that there are beavers down here. We got a poplar tree cut down. Um, it's still fresh because the leaves are actually dead on this. Live leaves, um, the bark's been chewed. It actually looks like the bark's been chewed quite a bit, maybe Hard to say, and it chewed the other branch off, so it's been eating the tips here. But I don't know, a tree couldn't last this long with this heat. So I would say this is probably the last, the last few weeks at least. It's not super recent, but it's definitely not super late. And that's what's clogging up over in the dam there. Some chewed branches here, all cleaned off, but this is dry. So that's been out there at least one season. And then throughout over here, there's some other clippings. Um, nothing super, super duper fresh. And then if I'm looking, over here, it actually looks like there might be a lodge. I might have found the lodge right here. There's lots of clippings over there. Could be a lodge or it could be the uh, trout habitat restoration kind, kind of deal where they've made a sort of a refuge for trout. Now there's a bit more activity on this side. You can see there's a tree that just didn't have to die because, well, <laughs> the poplar tree hung up. The beaver can't eat that. So it cut it down for nothing. And there's some cedar trees that's been eating over here on this side. So. There's quite a bit more activity over here, which is weird. Well, here's a look on the other side. This spot, it looks like it's like a beaver lodge, but it's, I don't think it is. It might be. It might be a lodge somewhere up in the bank, but I don't think so. It just looks like it's one of the habitat restoration program. They do, they pile the logs. That's they made some structure where fish could hide underneath it. So I don't actually think this is a, a lodge anymore. So I don't know where the lodge is, if there is one. It could just be every once in a while a beaver kind of comes through the area and grabs some stuff. There's a poplar tree over there that's still alive that they didn't go after. So I don't know. I'm kind of split on this. I think there's a possibility that there's a beaver here, but I'm not, I'm not sold. I wouldn't bet money on it. It still has a smell to it, but you can see how dry it is. So it's dried out a season. Like that might be winter. It's hard to say. It's definitely not like brand, brand new, but it's not old. So this is the same tree that fell across from the other side that we see the top still alive. And that beaver might have moved on by now too because it'd be like, wow, this water is too shallow. I don't like being here anymore. I need water for safety. You see the water's already come down just in that time. So it doesn't take too much. Well, since the water's leaving so fast, that beaver better get on it quick or it's not gonna have any water left. Well guys, it's been a couple of days. I left the camera undisturbed, the whole area undisturbed. 
So we're gonna check to see if we have a beaver or not. I'm hoping there's a beaver, but I'm also kind of hoping there's not one because if there isn't a beaver, then I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have any work to do. I could just report back that there's no beavers there. I uh, did manage to get a new pair of boots. These are from uh, High C. They uh, sent me them to try out. So if you guys want to check them out, they'll be the link down in the description below. They're nice high top boot. They, they actually come up just below my knee. Got some camouflage here and then we've got the strap. So this pretty much goes over my pants just like I like and uh, they feel pretty comfy. They feel almost like kind of like a running shoe. This is going to be interesting. We'll see. There wasn't a lot of sign as you guys know, but that doesn't mean there's not a beaver there. Let's check the camera. So I think it's always a good idea to not rely exclusively on the camera for intel. Intelligence, I think you should be able to figure out if there's a beaver in the neighborhood or not, kind of on your own merits without just like visual, ident visually identifying one with a camera. So that's why we broke the dam up just to see if the beaver would come back and repair it. Looks like it's filled up a little bit, but I don't know if it was repaired. So we're gonna make some guesses, preliminary guesses here. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll double check with the camera to see if our hunches are correct. Um, if I was to look at this, I would say that it hasn't, it hasn't been repaired. You guys can tell it's still broken here. It's still leaking. It's leaking over here, but it's not leaking like it's leaking here. And this is where we broke it. There, see all that water flow there? And there is some new cut green leaves. So that tells me maybe there's a beaver around because I think this is all, this is all new stuff. Uh, but it could just be leaves falling from the trees as well. But then again, it could be activity from the beaver. You see, once I move that, I just moved one little branch, which was actually hanging up the top flow there. So my guess, my guess is no beaver. <clears throat> so let's check the camera and let's see if our hunch is correct. We got seven impressions. I know one of them is me uh, just now probably activating it and a couple of me going across. So there may be only two impressions. Uh, that's me again. So that's three impressions. We only got four left. Me again. We're on the fifth impression here. Now this one is uh, naturey. <laughs> it's not me, but I don't actually see anything and it's daytime. So you would expect to have activity at night if there was a beaver. So there's really only one more impression here. And it's also a daytime one. And I don't see, I don't see anything moving around there at all. Yeah, and then the next one is just me. So there's no beavers here. Well, near as I can tell, there's no beavers here. So what I'll do next is I'll, I'll put some beaver caster before I leave down here. I'm not gonna bother to set a trap because I can't confirm there's a beaver here. If there's no beaver confirmed, it's not fixing the dam, then I'm not trapping anything. I'm just setting a trap. And there's also a risk with just setting a trap. I might catch a species that I don't wanna catch, like a mink or a muskrat or something just floating down the river or a duck or a goose or anything really, because they're gonna use the easiest path of resistance, which is gonna be right through the dam break. We're gonna try to cast from as far away as we can without making very much noise. Anytime you can cast in the shadows is a good idea. So up over there looks good. And then up over there looks all right too. And the shadow we hear too, but on the near side. Do a little bit of an underhander. We should be able to get something on it straight away if there's something around. Try to pull it out of the cover. There's a bite and a fish. It's a small one though. Where did he go? He dropped it. No. Oh, oh, those are just minnows. Smaller fish. Might have been a little brookie or a little brown trout. I think it's brown trout in here. There might be some brook trout, but I think it's mostly browns. I did have a fish come out and have a look, but he went away as soon as I jigged it. And there's a minnow again. We don't want the minnows. Looks like it might be deep enough in this little pocket here. Uh oh, I might get snagged here if I don't catch a fish on it. Oh, I do got a fish. Oh, and I lost them. That was a little bit bigger, but not massive. Let's try up a little bit more. Since we let that water out, it's a, it is a little bit shallower here. A 
don't even know if I can get that far. Really tough, tough to be a trout in here just because of how shallow it is. A lot of minnows. Right, oh, right in the money spot. That's exactly, almost exactly where that trout landed and it got it. Okay, see my line going? I can't wait too long because it's gonna go back in the brush and maybe I'll get snagged up, but I gotta let it swallow it. Okay, one, two, three seconds more. Okay, let's try. Oh, I missed him. Yep, I missed him. But you know what the good thing is? <laughs> he got a meal out of it, so he's not gonna be spooked. Let's get another worm on and we'll try again. Most of the shank and then as much of the line I can do as possible and then just pull up the line, that's good enough. All right, let's plop her in there. Perfect, again, perfect. That trout picked it up immediately. You can see the line going out and we got to say only a little bit of line, right? Not too much line or else we're gonna end up snagged. We want to feel the weight. One more second, one more second. Let's feel the pickup. Okay, where's the pickup, 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 pickup. Okay, let's set it, let's set it. Let's get him out. Hopefully this is a trout and it's not a trout. <laughs> we got ourselves another sucker. Well, it might be that kind of day. Might be that kind of adventure. Just a sucker adventure. All right, send that guy back in the creek. Hopefully a turtle eat him. I thought we had a fish. Yeah, we have a fish and then the jerk. So these are small fish, but you're gonna watch your line for responsiveness. All right, we should set, set the hook there soon. All right, we're set. And what do we got this time? What do we got this time? Another sucker. Wow, sucker creek. Set the hook and what do we got this time? Oh, we got another smaller sucker. So now we're getting down to the lower parts of the food chain here. <laughs> like smaller and smaller. And I'm going to take my worm back there, boss. Sorry. Thanks for playing. Well, looks like we might have to bushwhack now. Well, there's another, another beaver cutting right here. Well, the beaver was here for a while. I picked up a few mosquitoes here, guys. Ouch! Ouch! Oh. Oh, let's get out in the sun. The mosquitoes don't like the sun. Oh. Oh. It is super shallow in here. I'll tell you what. Got some old forest garbage. Some old bottles. Ah, oh, that's funny. Look at it. It's got a beaver on it. The Sleeman Brewing Company. It's got a maple leaf and a beaver. That's ironic or funny or something. I'm gonna try to toss one down there. I think there's a, maybe a fish rose there. The, the beaver had bigger plans for here, but that tree didn't land where it should have. And then it could have really made a good job on this dam. But it is what it is. Got it started, just couldn't complete it. You see where those branches are? going around in a circle, that's a resting spot for trout because, well, the water is running fast here, but over here it's circling, it's called an eddy. And so the branches and water go around in a circle, which means the trout don't have to work very hard to stay there. Well guys, I'm gonna give up on the creek fishing. I'm sure there's trout in there somewhere, but uh, I'm gonna throw in the towel on that adventure and I'm gonna switch over. We're gonna do our due diligence with the beaver I don't think there's one like living there right now, but uh, we have a service to perform here and that is to remove the beavers. But if there aren't any beavers, there's nothing to remove. I brought all my trap stuff here anyway, and I'll bring it out next time. But before I go, I can get this out without getting everything else out. Here we go. We've got some uh, caster. If caster doesn't attract it, then nothing will. This is a caster gland, so it uh, it's basically sent from a foreign beaver. We don't need very much of it. Just enough on a stick there, just in the bank there, so that a beaver wants to he wants to figure out who's in the neighborhood, and we'll just swim up. We'll get it on camera and all that good stuff. Sorry from the break, the scent. I mean that's all we can do. I don't think there was a beaver here to begin with. But uh, now we'll have two ways of confirming if that's true or not. Well, three ways, because my own intuition said there wasn't one either. There was one, there just isn't one anymore. I'm gonna head out, 
But uh, gonna get the big guns. Gotta get the big guns to come out. Open the open the gas tank. Silly. Let's get the big guns out. And let's hopefully we can turn this into a successful trip where we get something from it. All right, guys, that didn't uh, didn't turn out, but uh, we got Scott here now, so we got the big guns. And what I'm gonna do now is, well, obviously got the canoe this time around, but we're gonna go back down. I'm gonna check, or we're gonna check the, um, I put scent out. Uh, I don't know if Scott knows that, I told you that. Yep. Put some scent out, so we got the camera out there, so we're gonna see if there's any activity. If there's no activity, we don't have to set traps. Pretty much my obligation to this company here to get rid of the nuisance beavers is pretty much ticked off, right? No beaver, nothing I can do. And then I still get the reward of the job, the perks of the job, which is I get to fish. We get to fish. So Sounds like a plan to I me. told Scott I didn't have much luck in the creek and uh, Scott's a really excellent fisherman. So we should be able to get uh, a fish out of the pond, I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Brown trout and bass. We should be able to get a bass at least, right? We should be able to get them all. <laughs> we'll Which get everything? I'm hoping we're gonna get one of each. And we got everything to do a catch and cook too, so yep. let's get her done. All right, well, there's some pros and cons to uh, there being some activity down here. The pros, obviously, is that we get to go fishing. The cons is we don't get any beaver out of this deal. So it looks, oh, buggy. Doesn't look like there's anything uh, been fixed on there. The uh, break, the water's obviously lower, so it's not leaking as much. But uh, I don't see any repairs. So I'm gonna pass you the camera here, since Scott's here with me, and uh, I'll just do. I'm gonna pull the camera because I don't think there's anything on there. But uh, I will obviously check it. I'll show you guys. You guys can see later. But look, there's a raccoon right there. <laughs> Raccoon just in the corner there got his feet wet because I broke the dam on him. If that's a daytime one won't be a beaver daytime one. Uh oh Dude <laughs> There's actually a beaver in here. Well Right there He he came in he did some repairs so He didn't mind the um, The scent that much though. He just came in and stuck a branch in a couple branches there's the beaver or the raccoon again. Oh, there's a heron. That's pretty cool. Heron, heron in cool. there. Yeah, he went fishing. Geese? Holy smokes! Yeah, had everything in here. A whole family of geese went through. He had a gaggle of geese. And that's me. So the beaver only went, the beaver was lazy. He only went in and put a stick and left. So he's not very invested in that uh, that spot there. And he just went there and stuck one branch. So he's not and gonna then left. and then left. He's not gonna be easy to trap. So um since Scott's here, let's make the day of it. We'll go we'll fish first. And then once it's probably too hot, we can come down here in the shade, put cool some bugs, off. cool off, put some bug spray on. Yeah. And uh, try to figure out how to trap a lazy beaver who's not super ambitious about. Super lazy. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, we got a beaver, guys. So this turned around real quick, didn't it? I think you're right. Like there's probably, it's probably a secondary dam, right? Yeah, so, so that, what I'm thinking is that there's another dam way up farther. And like this water level just dropped enough where he went, what's, what's going on down there? And then swam down here and just checked it out. Yeah. And he's not too invested in it, which why he brought one. Yeah. Like I'll check the camera and see that I don't think, I only think we came in and put one branch. Like, oh, there's a hole here, guys. And yeah. then he's like, well, whatever. I'm hanging out like one or two kilometers upstream, right? Yeah. Where he's got the water levels a lot higher. And he's paying more attention to it. But uh, it was a pretty big beaver. And he's going to be hard to trap in that that lot small of a water, right? Because he's yeah. gotta go through at 330, right? He did look pretty big too, so. It's pretty sweet down here. Oh, look at, we got everything. <laughs> was not expecting this whatsoever. <laughs> well, we might as well just park up here. Weren't expecting that. Not at all. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Well, guys, this is why I took this job. I mean, look at behind me. We've got a whole pavilion with picnic tables to set up so we can do a catch and cook once we catch a fish. It's going to happen, I'm pretty sure. We're not going to catch a beaver today. That's not going to happen. I didn't set any traps. Silly me. I thought there was no beaver. But look at this pond. It's a whole private pond that comes as part of the industry. This is um, spring fed. It's 70 feet deep, and it's loaded with brown trout. And there's some bass in here apparently as well. But look at this thing, it's massive, 70 feet deep. So this is basically, they were pulling gravel out to run out to the highways um, for paving essentially. 
That's what makes it so that you don't sink down on the road and the roads stay in good conditions. So basically the water is going to be ultra clear. There, I can see some, uh, some panfish and bass right there. But look at this thing. Nice big giant pond. And they've been working with the uh, ministry to make this healthy. So they've been drawing some water out of this system and then dumping it into the creek that's really shallow to add a little bit of uh, coolness to the water. Because obviously with these conditions, things can get pretty hot. Tons of bass. A ton of bass and one really, really big bass. Like it was actually like a two pound bass. So worst case scenario, we should be able to catch a bass. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to try to go for trout because that's like the ideal thing yeah. to eat. But we'll take a bass. We'll take whatever the lakes want, lake wants to give us. Should catch a lot should of be, fish. It should be a good day. Yeah. If nothing else, it's not, it's not, it's not a big water. It's pretty big. It's big for pond sized fish. Th this is like a mini lake. Yes. It's a mini lake. Especially yeah. when it's as deep as what it is. I'd say 70 <laughs> feet. All right, guys. Well, let's get going. We can't catch any fish from, well, we could catch some fish from the dock, but <laughs> we can't catch any fish unless we put the water. The water's in the line, the line in the water. That's what I meant to say. So let's get the canoe out. Let's get going. Holy moly. That's chilly. Cold? Yup. Good? Yep, there's. Ready to go? I'm ready to go. It's almost time to put my buff on though. What did you see out there already? I've seen three trout. One actually just surfaced again over there, but uh, it's drifting away on you. I've seen three trout so far. One was probably, it was, it was a big, big brown trout. That is for sure. I've, I've actually, Dropped it in a piece of shrimp and I actually caught a fish already too. So that it was only about 30 seconds. Literally just dropped it below this dock and a bass came up and hit it. So I don't think we're gonna get that lucky again, but. It's gonna have first time in the canoe uh, this year. It's been a slow, slow start for me getting back, back into things. Should we, should we keep one like two pound bass? Okay. If we catch one. Yeah, if we catch the two pound bass, we'll keep her. All right. That sounds like a plan. I'm going to go with a standard worm to increase my probabilities. What are you going to try? Shrimp or? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try shrimp because I already got one on there. I have a feeling that these the fish that are in here are very cannibalistic. I noticed out in the creek there was a lot of bait fish and minnows, but we didn't see any at the landing here. No. So you might be right about the cannibalistic thing. So I've got a kind of an unusual setup. I've got a double swivel and a hook on there. So the swivels are going to give me some weight, but mostly so I can drag it without getting twisted up. So that worm is going to want to spin and having two, uh, two swivels on there will stop it from uh, getting a bunch of line twist. And you see that worm, it's just going to be a long drawn out thing. Very high visibility too. And what you got? Just a hunk of shrimp on there. Hunk of shrimp. Is that 15? It's about 15 -ish. Yeah, 12, 15. 12 to 15 feet right now. So that's a lot of visibility. <laughs> Whoa, a little, little bass. <laughs> so I'm spinning around here and show you guys. <laughs> Just a little guy. Oh, I lost oh, him. Off. Yeah, there was another one fall. Oh, that's a, that's a bigger bass right there following. Look at it right there. See him? Yeah. He's going to, he's looking at my worm. He's looking at it. He just shied. Oh, he's looking at it. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. God. Oh, I missed him again. Oh, shoot. Now I got a little he chunk. Lost his worm I, I lost my worm. I got a little chunk. There's a, those, those are some bigger bass there. I got a That's little, a really big bass here, guys. I got a little tiny chunk of worm on there. Oh, I caught him on the chunk. No way. It's, and it's a big one too. This is the biggest one yet. That was literally that a little a tiny chunk of worm. <laughs> and you got another one following him. Oh, there's my that's chunk on. <laughs> it is the original guy. Well, that's not the two pounder we're looking for. So this piece of shrimp down right here. Yeah, we'll pull it. We'll just horse this guy out. But uh, we're looking for the elusive two pounder at this point. So the bass this is a largey, I think, eh? I do believe so. Yeah, it's a large mouth. One? Little guy. It's perfect. But hey, we're on the board. Here we go. You guys want to catch like lots of bass. <laughs> you go after the lures, which is fun. Like if the action's good, but the action's really bad on high pressured fish, just throw a worm out. Yep. You will catch, or, or a minnow too. You'll catch all kinds of fish like that. Scott's on. We're gonna, like we're gonna better our, our size yet. <laughs> like a one. They're good fighters. 
Oh, you need the net or what? <laughs> oh, that might be the two pounder. That might be. Uh oh, it's a decent. Size. It's a pounder. That's a keeper. There's another one following it. Here, swing it, <laughs> swing it around and see if I can catch it. Oh, that's a keeper. That's a good pounder. It's not a two pounder, but it's a pounder. We could keep that one to make sure we're on the board. I got ice in the cooler, so we can keep it all day. Well, in that case, I'll use the net. Got him. Got him. Nice. Nice. One pounder. Beauty. Yeah, it's better one pound. Yeah. Oh, we got a jumper. Chris is on again, guys. Oh, nice. Why should keep him down? He's gonna throw my worm. <laughs> Just a little, little, guy. little guy. We're not getting better. We're get. We're going backwards now. <laughs> See how hard it is to hook them with that little hook? <laughs> not ideal. There we go. Back in the water. So since we got one one pounder, I think we probably got to get another one pounder. So we each ha each have one one pounder. Uh, after that, I think all the bass are going to be catch and release, and then we're just going to go for the trout. Does that sound like a deal? Sounds like a deal to me. Long line just means we let a lot of line out, and so if this the trout are spooky, like we're going over the trout right now, uh, by the time they reach where the line is, they've calmed down again, so they're more likely to grab anything that kind of goes by. And of course, while I'm fishing, I'm going to think of a strategy to catch that beaver <laughs> in shallow water. Yeah. <laughs> I might just have to put all my traps out in that little area and hopefully they swim through it. Should we paddle back out to the middle or just because of the wind? Drift the far side this time. There's something jump over there. Yeah. They're jumping again. Well guys, it's probably a good thing that we came out to the pond for a fish because actually there's more evidence of that uh, beaver hanging out here than anywhere else. There's a, you may not be able to see, but there's a clipping there. There's a tree over down there. A poplar, there's actually a poplar in the water too. So I imagine that's going to be the next victim. The creek's only a few inches deep. I'm like, I'm gonna pick the pond almost every time. So I'm like, eh. Dude, is that a lodge? We gotta go check that after. That might be where the beavers are hanging out. For serious. Like, look at all the chops there. Yeah. That, that might be the lodge. You know what, that's probably where he is. And he's in this pond. He's in the pond. Yeah, you know what that means is I gotta, I might have to uh, get the snorkel gear out and go down and find the entryways. That would be a thing to do. Well, we didn't get any hits at all while paddling. So that tells me it's probably not the good strategy. Drifting and casting and low impact is gonna be the way to go. Well, let's fire up the aqua view. It's always fun to drop it down there and have a peek. See what the trout see. They see, they see these, the, the bottom of the canoe. That's what they see. And then when they get down low enough, what do you see? There's the bottom. That's real warm. That is really warm down there. How could it be 82, 80? Maybe it's just got to cool down. Yeah, but I think it's got to cool down because if it's the 80, the water's not even that. Jeez, maybe it just has to cool off because it was sitting in the canoe. Um, no structure to speak of in this end. See if we can spot something out here. Feeling confident or less less confident? Well, we got one, nice one. So, I'm feeling confident that we're gonna get a couple more bats for sure. The trout are eluding us so far, but I got a couple, I got a couple tricks up my sleeves yet. Not there anymore. Yeah. Actually, more fish down there than you can see. They're looking at you. It's hard to aim this thing. He's going after the camera now. <laughs> hey, buddy. What is it? A sunfish? Yeah. Yeah. I got him on camera there. That's funny. The, the water is super clear. I think the trout are going to be pretty deep, so we're going to, like I'm, I imagine the the deepest part of this whole hole is where we're at right now, 70 feet. Like not that the trout are going to be down 70 feet, but uh, they could be down 20 or 30 feet and just kind of staging there and then something they see that they like to eat, they might just jet up and grab it. That's my theory anyway. He spotted it. He's right in front of you. Oh, oh he shied away. No, he didn't. He took it. He took oh, it. Yeah. oh, it's all the other guy, the little guy. Shoot, get back out there. He's still there. He's following it around. Can you get out? I'm gonna let my. I'm gonna let. It, I'm gonna let this uh, trout or this fish down as a, as a uh, fascin there, there. fascinator. He's he's looking at my bass. Okay, now I'm gonna pull up. Ready? I'm gonna pull up. Okay, catch him. Catch him now. There, he's looking at you. <laughs> I dropped the bass down there so that he would look at. He would stick around. 
Oh, he's shying away He's from not me. going after the shrimp, eh? Holy sh! Oh, it's a giant carp. Two giant carp. Holy shoot. Did you see those guys? Yeah. Was the carp eat worm? Yeah. That was. Those are like. Those are like 20 pounders. You see that? Those are bigger than the ones that we caught before. Holy. That was a massive fit. Two massive. They were like. I'm not even joking. They're like that. They were built like tanks, like this. Holy sh. That was. Those are big. Giant fish. Oh, now I can't cast. Too excited. Well, I'm curious about that beaver over there. I think we found where it lives. You guys are pretty smart, but you don't have to be pretty smart when you can see the boat from 40 feet away. Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Caught that guy uh, the wrong way. I got one too. Oh, big sunfish. <laughs> you got a trophy sunfish on there. Oh, I'd say that's a pretty good indication that the beaver's living here. What do you think? It's got chewings on this side, chewings on the other side, fresh green tree, and it's at the windswept side of the pond over here. So that just means his food's blown over here. I'm gonna go over, have a look, see if he's actually got a lodge set up on the other side. I think he does. That's my guess. And then every once in a while, I go get some food, comes back, hangs out here most of the time because, well, there's actually water to hide in here versus the creek, which is super shallow. Another little guy, medium size. I'll call him medium for this pond. That was deep. Oh, I got a fish. There you go. And I was on bottom legitimately. Here, pass the camera back. Oh, I, I'm filming. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, it's going to come up. It's a bass. <laughs> Big one? No. Well, bigger. Here. Bigger than this little guy? No. Here, I'll just go like that. Hopefully we don't lose the camera or the fish. Might be a keeper. Might be our other, our other one pounder. No, not quite. Half a pound. <laughs> Can't believe that guy was uh, that low in the water column. He's smaller. is a big oh no stay down it's gonna be a bass if it goes up what well, could be a trout i'm gonna keep it down get the net Gotta this is an actual net right away this is an actual fish this is an actual flipping fish <laughs> well considering it's turning us dude it's turning the boat i gotta keep it down it wants to come up okay i gotta switch around right here so i can bring it toward you <laughs> Somebody's having some problems over there. Dude, this is a big fish. 100%. Dude, this is a big fish. I'm excited to see what it is. Oh, stay down, stay down. Oh, what is it? Big bass. Is it a big bass? Oh no, the battery's running out on the camera. This thing's a hog. Oh, is it huge or what? Big fish. Oh my gosh. He's up by the oh gate. no! Oh, stay down. Okay. Oh, he's not gonna like the boat at all, is he? No. Oh. Okay, get him. Yes! <laughs> he is huge. Oh my. Okay. Oh, I gotta get the main camera out. First off. You barely had him hooked. <laughs> if there was slack in that line, it would it would have came off. Unreal. Because I didn't even grab it. All I did was push the line down, and it came off. Dude, one more head shake, I would have lost him. Oh, beauty! <laughs> nice. He is a big fish. He's actually bit, he's got their scars from fighting wow. other fish and everything. He's got a chunk taken out of him. That's a nice. That's a that's probably about two two and a half three. Oh yeah. That's a big one for here. Yeah, he's he's missing fin. Nice. We got to keep that guy. Oh, yeah. Let's keep him. Let's keep him and eat him. Big, huge bucket mouth on him. Nice. That's a nice bass for this pond. 
Okay. Considering what we're catching, can you, can I pass, can you pass him over here? Look at that guy, look at that hog. <laughs> you guys, you big bass fishermen might not think that's a big hog, but for here, for, for Canada, that's a big bass. That's like a two, three pounder for this pond, the size of this pond and what we've been fishing. That's a nice one. Well, it's not our target species, it's not a trout. I know you guys love bass fishing too, but uh, that's gonna make for a delicious uh, dinner maybe by the way things are going here. And uh, of course, we still got the mystery as where this beaver is hanging out. We still don't know, somewhere up in the river. So we'll keep working at this. But uh, I think we've got our lunch settled. First cast back in this little corner again and got him. Another beautiful fish, guys. Got to put back in the water here. Get him going. Well, we're over here where we thought the beaver made a lodge. I don't, I don't think it's a lodge here anymore. I think he just cut one tree down. He's just like, this guy's like nomadic. He just cuts a tree, hangs around, and takes off again. I don't really see, like, besides he cut one tree, he stripped all the bark off. I don't really see if he's... It doesn't look like a, no, a beaver lodge. It doesn't at all, does it? It looks like he just he just dropped this tree and then <laughs> did what he's been doing at the creek. So I don't know. Like, there's no place here to set traps. It might be just a matter of having to... Uh, figure out where he's really hanging out this is kind of how a lodge starts right they cut they cut one tree and they keep piling branches up and then they end up with like a big mound of cuttings and then they come up underneath of it and then they have a lodge like I'm not saying there isn't a lodge here but uh, it just really looks like one tree dropped and that was it you think there's a lodge there I'm doubting there's a lodge here just from what I've seen in lodges from other lakes and ponds I'm doubting that this is I'm thinking he's somewhere over in one of the there's another pond just over here I'm thinking he's somewhere over in that one this got uh, lost a fish broke off might have been a trout who knows hard to say but uh, seems to think it was bit a little bit differently these bass are pretty thump 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 whereas a uh, trout kind of hung on and he set the hook and gone broke the line so we're still after the elusive trout See it? no but he probably just went underwater so just kind of head, there he is, straight ahead at the boat. We just went under. There's slow up, that's good, that's good. There's bubbles there. Bubbles here. He's gonna be way up there probably. Well, we just spotted what looked like a beaver, but it looked like a small beaver. You can't really tell the size of a beaver just side of its head coming up. And uh, of course he was shy enough, he went under right about here where we couldn't see him anymore and I haven't seen him pop back up, but he's probably going to pop back up somewhere over here. Probably wherever, he, maybe he's got a bank den, like he might have a bank den, like literally anywhere in here. Get up a little more in there. Yeah, if you want. <laughs> well, there's a tree just off the edge, the pond's just over here. So cut that. This is an older tree though because uh, you can see the leaves are starting to die already. But uh, there's, <laughs> for activity, there, there's no lodge here or anything. It's just, you know, it's been hanging out here eating branches every once in a while and then who knows where it lives. The problem with a situation like this, I can see a couple of spots where the beaver's been coming in to feed over here. But like you can't, I can't trap a beaver unless I know like where it, where its runways are and there's no defined runways it can just climb up on the bank and grab everything and the 330s they have to be set in the water because they have to specifically target beavers and beavers are the only thing that well not the only thing but one of the only things that walk in the water uh, you can't be trapping raccoons and things like that because that's not what we're after well you can't say we're get, we give up easily so i wanted to i we've been paddling all the way around the, the lake here pond to see if there's a runway and then there's a tree that's cut here, a curious poplar tree on the other side, which we noted earlier. And if you look right here, there's a spot where something's been coming in and out of the water. Um, but I, what I've been looking for is like a runway. So a runway would run perpendicular to the shore and it would be washed out like a bass bed. You guys know what a bass bed looks like. It's obviously whiter than everywhere else. So that would be where the beaver's swimming up and coming across. Now, if you look over there, there's actually another pond over there. See there? That's a that's a kind of a funky runway, a gravel runway. And then there's 
maybe some scampering happening across here. And then if you look on the other side, there is a runway that goes into this pond. So the question is, is the beaver hanging out over here? And does he have a house over here in this pond? So I'm trying to look over and around the bend, maybe tucked up inside this corner here. It could be a beaver house somewhere, but I don't see anything. This looks like a nice little deep hole. So there's a little bit of a runway down here going into the pond here as well but I don't see any kind of lodge or anything and I don't know if I can get down there any better to see anything oh there's a whole bunch of carp there you guys can see those carp right in the middle there's about four carp there well I don't see anything obvious there so I'm not gonna waste my time trying to trap there there's nothing any different over there anyway that's it back to back to the drawing board oh <laughs> Scott's got a bass <laughs> They're getting a little easy to catch over here. Just a nice little one again. I just dropped Scott off on shore and uh, I'm gonna do a long line. So basically I've got the, a float holding the worm up off the bottom. And then I've got a sinker. You see down where my elbow is. And that'll float that worm up top. And then we can uh, relax on the dock and see if that'll work. And we're not dropping the, the trout down all the time, spooking them, going over top of them with the canoe. And uh, over time, hopefully, That'll get those trout relaxed enough to feed, to bite, to not spook. And in the meantime, we can get our lunch going. We're getting hungry. Luxuries. We got luxuries, boys. The dock, whole thing. Bass is one of those things that's, eh. At least here, depending on the, the temperatures of the water, can, can go either way as far as like flavor and taste goes. It's a cold water system. I find the bass around here, once it gets warm, they get full of worms. They also get kind of mushy, so, and you're catching them in warm temperatures to begin with. Good idea, uh, bleed them out. Scott's actually doing that right now. Got those so, bleeding. split split the gills, get all that bitter blood out. And then after that, you gotta cool that meat as fast as you can. It goes along with any fish meat, but when you're catching bass in the summer, it's even more crucial. So if you want fish to taste good, cool the meat, don't let it heat. Scott's gonna clean the next one. I already got one done. And uh, I checked the uh, trail camera and that's a lazy beaver. That is one lazy beaver. <laughs> I think he's not invested in the creek. So he's hanging out he somewhere here. From what, I, from what I'm guessing, well, we, we saw him over here. Yeah, so he's living somewhere over here, right? Yeah. Because they're, they're not normally active during the day unless they're very secure. Yeah. So there's a lot of water depth here. Once he saw that we were going after him, he ducked underwater and he took off somewhere over here. So who knows where? Who knows where? <laughs> he, he, he might have more than one den. He could, and right? from what I'm guessing, that was not the same beaver from what we saw on the trail camera because no, it was, looked smaller. Yeah, that looked like a baby. Yeah. Whereas the one in the creek was definitely an adult. So it looks like we might be having a little bit of a family problem here, <laughs> and yeah. they need to get evicted. Yep. And uh, so I don't know what to do from here. I don't think we're going to go after the beaver on this particular adventure, but you have to stay tuned because I'm pretty sure they're going to want to have me. Uh, stick around here until the problem is solved yep. because they're starting to pick off trees around the pond here And that will only intensify as the beaver gets established since my knife wasn't so sharp I uh, lent or I gave it to you gave it to him, gave it to him. his uh, post fly uh, had a uh, post fly tackle box You guys should know that by now post fly mr. Tackle box came with a pretty cool folding uh, knife. Yeah, I'll grab it here It's a uh, part of the one of the boxes and it uh, it folds out, so I thought we'd give it a try. It's pretty sharp, huh? It's pretty sharp and it's great. Like, uh, it's actually really nice. It's super sharp. That is for sure. Even after cutting through all these scales and everything, it didn't even dull it. So yeah, there you go. Really nice. So okay. yeah, thank you. Yeah, Postfly's got uh, Postfly, Mr. Taco Box. They've got like a bunch of goodies put in there. Uh, Mr. Taco Box more has more like fishing stuff. Whereas Postfly, well, they both they both have like little extra things that you probably don't have, but it's good to have around and good to experiment with too. So you guys use the codes down below. I always include them in all my videos too. New codes every year, and that gets you a pretty sweet discount. But uh, anytime you guys want to check that out, that helps my channel. And uh, you guys get some pretty cool stuff. It comes every month. This is a lot nicer than salmon and trout. That is for sure, because this skin is a lot tougher because of the scales on it. So it's coming off a lot easier.
Light her up. Do you know what that is? I'm guessing oil. It's oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Holden's old bottle, old drinking bottle. But it works good for oil. And then we've got uh, regular Wadobo. And have you seen this yet? I've seen it. I haven't tried it though. So I've got a bit of a story. I finally broke down. This isn't mine, this is yours. This but is I, mine. I finally broke down and I ordered a propane powered one from Cabela's Bass Bros. But the thing is, I always like to cook on a fire, but it, sometimes it's not, you can't do it, right? You can't Some, some places you're, they have fire bands and stuff like that. So, yeah. so these little portable stoves were great for it. You said you got this one from? Princess Auto. <laughs> of all the places. <laughs> you guys know I'm a big fan of Princess Auto. So everyone's, I did check Princess Auto first and it, they had a bigger uh, cooking, like outdoor barbecues. Yeah. So that is obviously more portable style one, right? That one yeah. looks good. Just comes in, I, the, in these little cases. Yeah, cool. Just I ordered I ordered like a, like a Coleman, like yeah. the traditional kind, and it takes a little propane cylinders. I just didn't get it in time. But thankfully, you've got one, so heat that oil up. That oil is starting to smoke now, so we are good okay, to go. Let's get those yeah. fish in there. Let's get eaten. Oh, I can already smell it. This stuff smells good. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, uh, it's just basically, it's basically, it's wadobo, but with uh, extra, extra maple mixed in there. You got the bags a little, little tight. I think it's ready to go. I think it's yep. real, oh, really ready to go. <laughs> nice. All right. Get them all in there. We can have them all ready at the same time. That's gonna fit. There we go. I think we're only gonna get two in there. Only two. There we go. We got a better cooking spot. Yeah. That looks good. That looks almost ready. Oh, uh, well, that just flaked apart. I think that's ready. I I'm eat. starting to think this is ready. I would eat that. Oh, I'm going to get in here and grab a bite too. There's really, like, fish is fish, right? Yeah. It's really how you treat the fish that matters. Like, if we let this get hot and warm and, and mush, it would taste like mud. Yeah. But that tastes like warm, delicious fish meat. Yeah, like it's re great. Really, it does. Yeah, no, it's it's wonderful. Wonderful wadobo taste. <laughs> there, you, there you go. What else, yeah. what else can you ask for? No, it's very mild fish. There's almost no taste to it whatsoever. It's kind of shocking, really, how flavor, flavorless bass flavorless. is. <laughs> but, like, the, all you can really taste is the wadobo in it, and, like, it tastes amazing. So, it's great. I think there's going to be another chapter of the story, so you have to stay tuned. I think it was a success on, or it was a success on the beaver because we know roughly where he is now. We know more about it than we when we started. Exactly. So not going to get on the beaver this time, but stay tuned because we're going to come back and open this chapter back up and finish the book on it. Yeah, that's we're, we're going to find you, beaver. We're going to trap you, and we're, you're going to be gone. We're on to you. <laughs> we're going to keep eating this fish. I'll we'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> I uh, just set the car up and uh, fish was splashing out here and then uh, ran out and checked my line and sure enough it was aimed the other way. That, yeah, there's a hundred percent there's a fish on there. Here, flip that around there. Thank you. Whether it's a trout, it, I think it's a trout the way it jumped before. Oh, it's a big fish. That is a big fish. Dude, it's a log. Should I go get the net? <laughs> I can beach it here, I think. Dude, that thing's not even moving. I'm losing the, oh, no. Why isn't this dragging? Don't tighten it too much. That is a big fish, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, why does it keep doing that? What if you're caught up in some weeds? Oh, we don't need the canoe. Or it's head shakes. Hope we don't need the canoe on there. Considering we just put it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I wouldn't beach it over here. I'd beach it over the other side. What are you hoping it is? I hope it's a big brown. So do I. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, because we one. set it over here, and the fish jumped way over here. Well, that's what they do, because they run. And then the line was way over here. <laughs> with the line, right? What is it? It is a giant it bass. It is a giant bass. Oh! <laughs> Stay down. They were going to beach them. That's a big bass, too. I don't know if you guys can see him or not. I gotta beach him because of uh, I can't reel up that much more. Big bass. Come on. Come on. Get out of the grass. Here we go. 
<laughs> another one. Oh, he swallowed it. We might have to keep him. <laughs> I might be able to get the hook out. He swallowed it pretty good. That's about the same size as the other one. Dang it, man. Can't get a trout out of here. We can get all kinds of trophy, uh, trophy sized bass. Got the edge of the hook. Oh, there we Straight go. Straight out. Perfect. All right, I'll let this guy go. You want to do it? Yeah, go ahead. You got him. Quicker the better. Woo! Look at him go. There we go. <laughs> Even splashed me and got me all wet. <laughs> nice fish. There you go. You guys want to try that dead set line for survival? Works really good. Cool. Set camp. Put your line out. Come back. Catch a fish. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.